with Aaron. I know I'm a fucking nightmare to live with. I'm hard work, I'm needy, I'm selfish, and I make very few attempts to change. But I do love you. I know you know that. Do you remember the first time we met? I do, and it was probably one of the worst nights behaviour on my part. I disrespected you and your home, but still you wanted to meet me again. I thought you were fucking nuts. Then you bumped into each other. Then we bumped into each other after work, and I caught your eye across the empty bar. I run, reluctantly walked over and said hi. I know it was what, the worst second first impression anyone could ever make, but it was all the words I could muster as I frantically looked around looking for a hole in the earth to open up and swallow me. Still, you acted like it was good to see me, and we both smiled. I still remember your smile, and it was genuine and warm. I don't think it was too long after that we were snogging like brandy teenagers in front of my mate who I was actually meeting. As I left you to see a show that night, I remember feel, having a warm feeling, something that made me so happy. We texted each other continuously during the rest of the night and right through to until our first proper day. As it got close to the day, I must admit I wanted to cancel. I felt sick and nervous because I felt like I was letting you get close to a fraud. I felt like I believed I knew your thought process, my own personal register better than you knew yourself. I was afraid you would see the real me and you would hate me just for being me. You didn't. You took me to a bar and we drank beer while you sat staring at me, as I never stopped talking about myself and what I do. I felt like I was the only person at the bar that, because of your attention you gave me, it was a really lovely night. But the whole time I was quoting from the Gospel of Chris, I knew at some point I would have to be honest with you and let you into the big secret. The book of Chris is actually lost, lost in translation, lost into its own message, lost with no followers except this sad little gay boy clinging on to it like it was all he ever had. So I continued the gospel selectively choosing extracts to match my stories. I told you tales of my bravery, I told you tales of my great loves, and tales of my worst nightmares, but I never told you all I really wanted to, was someone to hold me tight, say it's okay and be my friend. Do you remember the that big secret I finally told you? Well, it was a big secret, it really isn't that big, but it scares me so much. Do you remember all the excuses I used to give you to put off having sex? I've never let you in on, I need to let you in on one little secret. I still run through all those excuses before we have sex, like a list. But now I can't find the one that, that one could can stop me. I'm still afraid every time we fuck that I will make you sick, that I will do to you what was done to me. I always feel that I'm expected to ruin your life and make you into a shadow just like me. It's crippling share feeling sharing my body with a virus that hates me, and what's more, wants nothing more than to hate you too. I need you to know I hate being like this, and I can't understand why you would choose me when you can have a normal, healthy guy. Please write it back. I love you. Chris. Dear Chris, yes, you are a nightmare to live with, but as long as I love you and you love me too, we can get through it. The good times are not that bad. I know I can be challenging. Maybe I'm a little stuck in my ways. Maybe I'm just a little bit older. I've done that, been there and bought the t-shirt. Or maybe it's that I just won't give you the opportunity to find out some things for yourself. The first night we met, I remember it well. It was quite by chance, and I remember thinking you seemed like a really nice guy. Not sure why you thought I was fucking nuts. 
But it was a really weird night. I don't think either of us really want to remember. And I would far like to think of our second encounter as the real time we met. I remember it well. It was early and I was meeting a friend who didn't turn up. I was in the Admiral Duncan and it was pleasant to see you again. Immediately I wanted to get to know you better. I'm really glad you didn't cancel our date after that second meeting. I remember we went to Wanstead Village and went to a very nice pub and sat outside to eat. Yes, you did talk a lot about yourself, but I was generally interested. You seemed to come from a completely different world to me. Although I was, I was listening intensely to what you are saying, I never thought you were speaking your own gospel. To be honest, I've heard enough people smoke their own dope in my time to see through that crap. To be honest, I see through the smoke in the mirrors, I see the real... I see the real you. Maybe that's why sometimes it can be a bit quiet. A bit quiet. I try to interpret and translate what you were saying to understand what you were truly saying to me. Your big secret, well that scares me too, but honestly, you never really kept it a secret. From day one you were honest and open with me in life. You shouldn't let things get in the way of falling in love with someone. Putting up barriers like this, it's not healthy and ultimately it made both of us unhappy. It will tear us apart little by little until there's nothing left but fear and resentment. I'm a big boy. I can make my own choices in life. I know the risks, but I know how to reduce them. I want you to know that yes, it is my choice, as it is yours to be with the relationship, but almost every day I'm excited to be with you and look forward to the future. At the moment it can be tough at times, but I'm sure it will get easier. We have even more fun experiences together and the shit you're feeling now at the moment with your virus will ultimately not influence what shapes your life. Yes, it will always be there. Be happy, fulfill your life is far more important. Remember that I love you and I'll be there for you to speak to you and hold you when you need. Not just when you're down, when you're up to Darren. Dear Darren, sorry Chris can't come to the phone right now, he's rather tied up. Let me introduce myself to you. I am V. You don't know me, but you seem to have a hold over this vessel I require. I'm not going to let you go, I'm not going to be your mate. I found you first, and I'm on the inside, and you can't get rid of me. When you see, you see, when I found Chris, he was open and honest. He was trusting and stupid. He opened the door and I simply walked in and took my place at the dinner table. I was eating his food for a month before he even thought to question my presence. It's funny, he wasn't my first. Although you all people are getting clever by blocking my access routes through these vessels. I must admit, it's rather annoying the little trait you people have of getting smarter, getting clever and acting quickly. I will fight you back. It's rather comfortable in here. I have unpacked myself well. Then since you have come along, this vessel has gotten clever. It is fighting back and I'm struggling to maintain holes I once had. If only I could make a deal with another party. I'm not above a power share, even if it is with something repugnant. Best of luck, V. Sorry V, I won't even give you the time to say dear, since you are far from it. You are a selfish little twat who is self-motivated. You think you can control people, and you are the only one in their lives that you are wrong, so wrong. I remember something going back to my primary school days. If you love something, let it go. If they come back, it was meant to be. And if they don't, it was never meant to be. V, if you really want Chris, maybe let him go. Maybe he will miss you, maybe he won't. But give him that opportunity. I'm not interested in a power share with you. I want Chris to myself. 
if you want to be a gooseberry in our relationship, so be it. But ultimately, if it comes to a choice between me and you, V, I'm pretty sure that Chris will choose me every day of the week. So fuck off, V. Darren. Dear I was thinking about Edinburgh and that terrible fight we had. I know it was months ago, actually it was last year. It feels in so many ways like it was a hundred years ago, and yet the pain I felt that night still feels so fresh. I still can't explain why I snapped I tried to ruin a great thing. In hindsight, I'm lucky you didn't listen to me when I was in a rage and you stayed calm. Do you remember I told you about when I grew up all happy and loved in, nanny's, in my nanny's house, where it didn't completely shelter me from seeing the destructive nature of my biological mother and her partner. On the other occasion, I would have to stay over for the night in their house, mostly to stop any rumours that I was not living there, reaching social services and interfering with her divorce from my father. I would witness the oddest things, as she did want me there, I would be left to my own vices until I would inadvertently get in his way, and then all hell would break loose. He had this terrible habit of being a total cunt. He liked to come along in the hallway while I played, and just at the point of passing me by, he'd reach out and every time manage to grab the top of my ear in between his thing first finger and thumb. I used to think he pra must practice by catching flies with it fly. It was then the look on his face would change. His breath would become heavy and I would become a rag doll. He'd frantically shake his fist while maintaining the grip. This resulted in the worst pain I could imagine as my ear would feel like it had been ripped clean off. But also the clever cunt would manage to use the rest of his fist to simultaneously punch me on the side of the face, just in my temple. I felt like one of those balls connected to elastic. 
bouncing off the wooden paddle. The really stupid thing about this was that each time I would believe it was never going to happen again. Not because she would come to the rescue, she would never get in, his, in the way of his fun. After all, he was her new cash cow, and fuck me, she, sp she spent a lifetime milking that stupid bastard. Now the stupid thing is, I would, do, would fight back screaming at him that he, would, he had no right. He was not my father, and he was a complete prick. I got rather good over the years of, at finding this monologue, so much so I believed it completely. Maybe I was brainwashed into becoming numb. Still, it was this outburst that would see me chucked out of the house, then I would, could spend the time, time alone. I'm sure you're wondering why I ever told you this. I want to explain that when I, when I was scared, I lashed out. Stranger thing that night was that the fact I was scared, I was truly happy. I'm a worst enemy. Even the voices in my head argue about the amount of time I spent time and feel sorry for myself. I do think that all the, my personalities got together and worked for the greater good, life would be easier, but it's hard to take my foot off the gas when I'm driving alone. Please write back. Love, Chris. Chris, that experience in Edinburgh was possibly one of the most conflicting times in my life. It started off being a good day and night, and I thought all was going well. I did start to have a few questions when you said about having a drink, since you'd stopped your drinking completely. I thought at the time, I can't say anything as it was your decision, especially if you were going to only have a few beers, as you said. Then we went to that club. You went upstairs. You were going up there because the drinks were easier, the bar was quieter. When you went, you were fine and happy, then within a split second, it felt like you turned Jackal and Hyde. It started to accuse me of lots of shit, which was completely untrue. There was no way I could prove that you were saying it was untrue. There was no evidence or substance to even prove that you were saying it was true. To be honest, if we keep going back to this time, we will never move on from this. It's something I try my hardest to forget since I don't want to get angry. The first night in Edinburgh, I've never felt so alone in my life. You question, you question what I was doing. You didn't realize how close I was to, to just getting on the train that night and walking away. I'm glad I didn't know, but I don't think I could ever take something like that again.